Warning, some viewers may find the video disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. Today's horror manga dub and narration is Ryuko. From the horror anthology, The Horror Mansion. If you enjoy this story at any point in time, please do not hesitate to like, comment, and subscribe. It really helps me out a lot. Anyways, without further ado, let's get right into this chilling tale. Our story takes place at Yamamura General Hospital, where a baby continues to wail. Look, take a look. It's a cute boy. Let's name him Ryuko. The name that you thought of, Yuko. But his wife uttered five final words that were, Dear, take care of Ryuko. And then, her heart rate went flat. And she passed away. Yuko! A few days later, the baby would continue to cry. He began to pour some milk. And he said, Hold on, I'll give you your milk right away. But the baby continued to cry, and his heartbeat began to throb as the crying continued. And as we know it, the passage of time continued, and the boy grew older, crying less, and beginning to do something very strange. He had a ball in his hand, and then it slipped, and what happened next was miraculously, it flung back into his hands at a tremendous speed, as the father could only but watch. Eight years later, Ryuko grew up some more. He was now a young boy running as fast as he could back to his home. When he got there, he placed his key into the keyhole and opened the door, peering inside. On the table there was a note, and then he looked over. He saw a cute cat on the ground. It began to meow at him, and the boy began to smile, stroking the cat. But then, while he was playing with the cat, it sprung into action, clawing at his hand. Ow! You bastard! It then hissed at him, and sweat dripped down his brow as it continued to approach him. But then, in a horrific turn of events, the cat bursted into smithereens, blood dripping everywhere. His father walked into the room, sweat dripping profusely all down his skin. As Ryuko stared at him, the father grabbed him by his clothes, saying, Ryuko, what the hell are you doing? Didn't I tell you to take good care of living things like that? Listen, don't kill living things anymore. He's smiling. <laughs> Damn it, it's that power again. Shit, have I lost? As a father, I can't be afraid of such power. Don't be afraid. But then, he let Ryuko go. Five years later, Ryuko was now even older. He was in school, and when he came to his locker, he noticed a bunch of letters, each one of them addressed to him. Later that day, he went up to the rooftop and began to read them. <laughs> he ripped it into smithereens. In the classroom, you see, all of the girls would surround him 
and get all giddy in his presence, for to them, he was a total hottie. <laughs> Why is that guy always so popular? That doesn't suit me one bit. Well, it's good, isn't it? It can't be helped if he keeps however many super ugly girls. We have the class idol Mio. <laughs> agreed, agreed. But you see, Ryuko too had his eyes on Miho. After school, Ryuko waited on the path that she would normally take home. And like clockwork, there she was. He stepped out from behind the tree and said to her, Wait! What is it? She responded. He stood there for a moment, not saying anything, and she then interrupted the silence, saying, You have some business of me, Natsume? He requested to her, Go out with me. <laughs> she began to giggle, and Ryuko was not <laughs> amused. He said, So, you like me too, Natsume? as she giggled some more. <laughs> and the more that her laughter continued, the more Ryuko grew impatient until, finally, he snapped. This bitch! In that instance, a tremendous pain formed in her heart. She clutched her chest as she fell to the ground. Blood dripping out from her mouth. As she trembled before him, Ryuko looked down at her. With a superior look on his face, he shoved his foot on her head, smushing it down against the grass as he continued to stomp on her. He then pulled his foot back at a tremendous speed kicking her violently against the ground as she trembled in pain. And then, he took things to the next level. Veins began protruding from her head and her eyes about to pop as he yelled, Die! Her head exploded into smithereens in blood stained the green grass. <laughs> he walked away slowly and headed back home. That night, the 7 o'clock news went on. This is the 7 o'clock news. Today at approximately 5.30, a murder occurred in the forest. The victim was a middle school girl who was killed by having her head crushed. According to eyewitness testimonies, the police said that this is not a type of crime they've seen before. It can't be! Ryuko, are you here? Ryuko! His door ever so slowly creaked open. So... You finally killed a person. Even if you keep quiet, your father knows. No one but you can kill in that manner. There's a car outside that I've prepared. You and I are going to run away. If we're slow, the police will come immediately. Hurry and do it. And so, the two of them ran out of the house and into the car, as the father said. Listen, hide yourself under the sheet in the back. Let's go. He pushed down on the gas pedal as the tires began to squeal and the car accelerated to a tremendous speed. As Ryuko looked out the window. But little did they know, they were being watched. Boy A and his father are escaping. I'll be pursuing immediately over. Roger. Thus, Ryuko's life on the run began.
Hey everyone, thank you so much for watching. I'd like to take this time to give a very special thanks to my Patreons and YouTube members. Sarah De Jesus, Moto Surf, Leo, Dason Animus, Minyu Wei, Rich Harris, and Andre Wolf. Thank you so much for watching. And remember, you're important and you matter. Have a good night, everyone. Goodbye.